This video is a presentation of the Pixar pump tool. We begin on what's called the switchboard. The switchboard has the buttons that takes you to the different areas of the program and we're going to go to the database program starting with the demographic area beginning now. We begin by choosing a patient record which can be done from the Dropbox or you can enter it manually either by chart number or last name. There are five fields that need to be entered for a new patient and that consists of the patient ID, the first and last name, the sex and the date of birth. An optional field called Other ID is used to identify the facility such as a Bronx VA. Lastly, the other area that you have as an option is the patient image. After choosing the patient, you now click Go to Measurements button on the lower right. This opens a form that has a number of tabs at the top of the screen. The first tab is the Wound Summary or the Wound Profile. As you know, patients can have more than one wound, so in this case the patient has three wounds. A foot ulcer, a pressure ulcer, and a leg ulcer is shown. The wounds are automatically named using the patient ID and then the wound number. So it's, it would be Q12341-2 or dash 3 in this case. Note that you're able to locate the anatomical region of the wound on the little models to the right. So the foot ulcer shows a foot, the leg ulcer shows a leg, and of course the pressure ulcer shows a body. In this demo, we're going to show you the foot ulcer and the information entered about that foot ulcer. The next tab at the top of the screen will show you the wound measurement tab, which is seen now. And the following tab next to that are the grids and graphs, which graphs your data. We'll go into the details of these two tabs in a few minutes. What should be noted here in creating the profile is that the information about the wound is selected from drop boxes. There is no typing at all here. The pump parameters are selected here for the wound profile including the dependent side, body side, upper leg flexed, orientation. Other fields here include treatment plan, support surfaces, the wound diagnosis and contributing factor, the place of onset is noted, including, let's say, an ICU or a nursing home. The date of the new SCI pressure ulcer, and this area also ages the wound for you, so you know how old it is and how long you've been treating it. Other fields include the wound location and whether you're treating the wound as an active or palliative type care. Let's now spend some time on the second tab, which is known as the wound measurement tab. The wound measurement tab contains the data for the wound and it also contains the pictures of the wound at the time that you measured them. Here you see three images, the baseline image, the current wound image, and the measured image. If you click on the image, it opens up in your default viewer, in this case Picasa, or you can click on the measured image and it also opens up in Picasa so you can have a better look at the image enlarged. You may also scroll through the wounds. In this case, at the top, you see we have seven images, and you're now able to scroll back and forth through the images. So here, I'll, I'll start from the beginning image, and I'm clicking along, and you're now up to the fourth, the fifth, and the sixth, and finally the seventh image. When the image is changed, so is the associated data changes, along with the percent change in surface area, the length, the width, the depth and the volume if you uh, had calculated those. It's all done by the uh, computer as you will soon see. As mentioned before and as I'll mention again there is no typing here. The data is generated by the computer when measuring the image. The next tab is the grids and graphs and here you can clearly see that uh, this is the area graph, the length and width graphs, and the volume graphs and all these show that the wound has progressing nicely toward closure. The next area we're going to look at is the SCI pumped area and that's a little button at the bottom there on the right so I'm going to click that now and this opens up the pumped area. The pump tool area consists of two main tabs at the top of the screen, the evaluation 
and the pumped graph. All the data here is generated by the program and moved into the pump tool automatically. In the examples shown here, there are seven evaluations equivalent to the seven visits that the patient had. And here I'm scrolling through the different pumped scores. Each evaluation includes the information about the ulcer, the positioning, the support surface and treatment plan, who the evaluator was, when it was evaluated, and of course the geometric fa uh, factors, the substance factors, the scores, the total scores, and it also includes the detailed measurement. So really it's more sensitive and you have a lot more information here than a regular pumped evaluation. Please note that when selecting the parameters for the geometric and the substance factors, the computer will add up the scores for you automatically. These are done by drop boxes. Now one of the things the program does is after you have a number of scores, you can look at it graphically. And what by clicking the top at the top of the screen where it says SCI pump graph, it'll open up and plot automatically the graph. Note that all the parameters are at the top of the screen there. Uh, listing and with the total score. So we started at 13, stayed at 13, dropped down to 10. As you can see, it slowly shows that the patient treatment is getting better. We have the option here, if you want, to actually create a PDF report which can be then uh, attached to your CPRS. I'm going to create one now. You just uh, click this print button and it'll create the same thing that you see here graphically in a PDF uh, document. So now that you have a little overview, what I'd like to do is close this and go back to the wound measurement tab and now add a new measurement, uh, measure the wound and create a new pumped evaluation. So at the bottom I click add new measurement and this opens a new form where we'll do the measurement first thing you need to do of course is to select uh, your image to be measured and Pixar normally is pointed to whatever that folder is typically it'll be on your server so I've now selected the image the first part of this we do what's called a simple calibration by dragging and dropping this pink line to the ruler we you then accept the calibration once it's performed and then choose the date of service which should be written on your label whether it's pre or post debridement, and now you can begin doing your measurements. We begin by doing the area button, and what we do here is we literally paint the surface to be measured. And you can see now I'm using a mouse with the mouse pre button pressed down. We then simply paint the area that we need to be measured. If you make a mistake, you can erase it or you can redo it, so there's no problem. You don't have to worry about making a mistake. So once it's colored, like it is now, we just click the green button which allows it to calculate the surface area. We then enter a depth measurement, and of course this wound it has no depth at this point, so we're going to leave it as zero. Once we've done that, you can then do your length and width parameters, and you can see by clicking on one margin of the wound, you just simply drag and drop this red line to the, uh, to the picture, and for the width we're going to go perpendicular. Now that we've completed that, we click Finalize Image. Once we do that, we then click Save Image or Save This to the Patient Record. Now that that's completed, the data and the images now become part of the patient record. I then click the Next tab just to have a quick peek at the data grids and graph. And here I looked at the area, length and width, and of course the volume of the wound. Having made my measurements, it's now time to create the pumped evaluation. So I go back to the measurement tab. At the bottom, click Open SCI Pump. And when I do, if you notice, it's going to tell me that there's no evaluation for this wound. So if you notice, everything is empty here right now. So as soon as I uh, say yes, I'd like to create a evaluation for this particular visit, and I click yes, all the data and everything moves in automatically and you can see here that the surface area and the depth is included automatically so the only thing you have to do to complete this task is to, to do the edges the undermining the exudate and the necrotic tissue 
Now you can always click on the picture to make it bigger if you want to see what those edges look like in case you forget. And as I'm talking you can see I'm clicking right through and I've now uh, really pretty much created that. Maybe the last thing you want to do is maybe add a, a comment here maybe saying that the wound continues to improve or whatever it is. Carmel and uh, Ali at the VA uh, use this for a lot of things uh, about the treatment and how the patient's doing. Once that's completed uh, I will then save this to the record. So I click at the bottom save record and the last thing here you'd like to do now is to actually create this evaluation so that you can attach it to CPRS. So there's a picture. So when we do that we print we click the print button and as soon as we do that uh, it allows you to, to create a PDF of this particular visit. All of the data that we had entered automatically is now uh, placed into this document. As you can see, the geometric and substance factor, the wound area, the percent change in surface area, uh, the treatment modality, the surface uh, support surfaces, uh, everything that you had on that form you as the evaluator, that can now be easily attached to CPRS and viewed anywhere within the VA. I now just checked my other graph and you can see that the new evaluation is there. It was in green. We have now completed this and now I'm going to exit from this uh, and we're going to now after this look at another area of the program which involves an analysis of your pump tools. The analysis tool which I'm about to show you will allow you to uh, analyze the information contained in the, uh, <clears throat> in the pump tool. So all those parameters are now going to be available to you. We begin by uh, going back to the switchboard and we go down to the bottom there on the right and you'll see pump query and analysis. When this opens, you're going to see all the different fields that you should be familiar with, including the side of the ulcer, the dependent side, the, all the different scores, uh, the place of onset. So you now have the ability to query uh, the database and find out all kinds of information that you have now uh, entered uh, using the pump parameters. Let's begin with a simple example of finding all new uh, pressure ulcers that were developed in the SCI unit uh, between specific dates. So let's say I choose January 1st of 2014 and July uh, 1st of 2014. When I do a search, it, it queries the database and finds that we have three new ulcers that have occurred on the SCI unit. We then click at the top and we can display the results of this in the grid and you can see it here and then we can also if you like create a report which also can be imported or, or sent to different people via email. It's another PDF. So here's a report of the three uh, new SEIs and all the information about uh, those particular new wounds. Let's try another query. Uh, in this case we're going to do start with the site of the ulcer. I'm going to choose let's say the left ischium. So give me all my uh, patients that had a pump of a, on the left ischium and we want to know uh, if these things, uh, these ulcers were developed in the intensive care unit. So this is just two, these are only two variables and you can do and or but in this case I'm doing and. So it's left ischium and ICU and we retrie retrieved only one. So we only had uh, one patient that developed uh, an ulcer on the left ischium in the ICU. We can use up to five parameters. So actually we could actually add another parameter. Let's say we wanted to know um, between certain dates and or we could maybe just say we want to know um, if any of these particular uh, wounds that were developed have a uh, total score of, of let's say 13. So you can start to, as you can see it can get quite complex as you, you can use all the parameters of the pump tool and all the other things that we added including the site uh, maybe you could use it by diagnosis you could check by support surfaces and you're going to be able to understand and it gives you the percentage of whatever it is uh, uh, within your database. It's going to give you a lot of interesting uh, information 
and will tell you exactly what what different treatments are working for different uh, types of wounds along with giving you what support surfaces in combination with treatments will give you the better results so that's kind of the overview I want to give you today I mean there's a lot more to this it's a it's a bit complex it can get it can get pr uh, pretty detailed if once you get involved with up to five or uh, five parameters with the and or uh, variables um, but you now have an overview of what Pixar is, how it works, how it relates and brings the data, creates these things for your uh, pump uh, evaluations and how you can analyze them. If you have any questions, you can contact the, the Bronx VA who's been using this now for, sh for a couple months and you can also uh, contact me directly with my information is at the end of this video. Thank you for your attention and I hope uh, you find this interesting and useful in your practice.